Hi guys, it is a beautiful spring night here in the collapse of global industrial civilization. It is 11.30 at night here on uh, Tuesday night, June 1st, 2021, and I have had a, uh, shall we say, a bit of a collapse in my own life today, which I will not bore you with. But since there's still 30 minutes left in June 1st, 2021, for what it's worth, I am going to uh, hang out here for another 30 minutes and we're going to do what I tried to get around doing earlier today but just did not have my mind here. We're going to check in with one of our very own tribes members and a buddy of mine. We're going to call him... Stephen Davidson. Stephen Davidson is, well, let's, we'll call him a risk assessor. How does that sound, Stephen? Does that work for you? A risk assessor. And uh, this man, guys, I, I am going, uh, he has been kind enough to jot down a few thoughts what I'm going to share with you. I, I, I sheepishly admit, guys, I don't understand maybe about a third of this. I, I have no clue what the man's talking about and uh, about another third I have a general idea but I know this man and if he says it's true there's a good chance it is and so I am going to share what Stephen Davidson sees in his tea leaves coming up over the next few years. Okay. <clears throat> I have got a sort of threat assessment for you to ponder upon. This is what I do. Assess risks, and the risks coming our way are monumental and unprecedented. Okay, number one on his list is the coming artificially created food crisis. The drought situation in the South and Midwestern breadbasket states is catastrophic. The COVID lockdowns and the follow-on and the follow-on farmers' bankruptcies and farmland foreclosures and sell-offs will and has led to shortages of basic foodstuffs like potatoes, fruits, and other vegetables. This is why the prices at the grocery store have tripled. I, I'm not going to argue with uh, Stephen. I have not noticed the prices at the grocery store tripling, but I only feed one person. I The prices seem actually, um, anyway, this is Stephen's rant. Uh, I'm not going to make this a debate. Maybe where Stephen lives, I have seen, I have not seen this. Anyway, this is why the prices at the grocery store have tripled. Their yearly yields per acre of summer wheat, corn, soybeans, and cotton are down this year, but nominal. However, the shortages are coming due to the fact that the Chinese and Latin American nations are buying the majority of our nation's critical crops. Everyone is stockpiling for the foreseeable future, except the U.S. Also, the cost from farm to table ratio is growing. The exponential rise in the cost of fossil fuels, again, I'm not sure we're seeing an exponential rise, but again, this is Stephen's view of it. Uh, the exponential rise in the cost of fossil fuels has created an inflationary uptick in food production cost and henceforth food distribution cost. Add to this the unavailability of simple micro microprocessors and other materials has slowed the new production of needed farm equipment such as tractors and harvesters. And tomorrow I'm going to read this article from the New York Times today. The second biggest story on the planet will be my chronicle of the collapse 
uh, right here in the New York Times and Yahoo News talking about this very thing in this long article about what do they call that last minute you know when you got 72 hours to get everything to the store whatever they am having a senior moment has been a tough day okay uh, we all saw the massive acreages of rotting greens, corn, and mountains of rotting potatoes. All of these losses for the food pipelines in the various agricultural regions were phenomenal. This created more farm bankruptcies and paved the way for corporate ownership of our agriculture and food production and distribution. Also, the war on fossil fuels has also dramatically increased the cost of fertilizers. Hence, food will soon cost the average U.S. household 36 to 45 percent of their respective wages. Do the math. All of this was a planned and strategic action to take control of the food supply. This is why Bill Gates, Jeff Bezos, BlackRock, and Goldman invested record amounts in purchasing all of the arable farmland in the U.S. within the last year. This was all done through shell companies. Going forward, these billionaires and their corporate backers will control 50 to 75 percent of the producing agricultural land in the U.S. It's like the old axiom, he who controls the food controls the people. Okay, number two on his list of risks. The reshaping of the U.S. economy, or to put it plainly, the coming dollar collapse and the rise of its digital replacement, the U.S. dollar is indeed collapsing. This is obvious to those who understand simple economic policies. Unfortunately, I'm not one of those people, but I'm here to report other people who do understand them. Inflation is a thing. If the global parasite class gets their way with the so-called Green New Deal, which is a global initiative, then the current status of the U.S. dollar as the global reserve currency pegged to crude oil will be no longer. This is ongoing as we speak. The Fed banks know, knew exactly what they were doing with 0% interest rates and printing dollars as if there were no consequences to such actions. Those who hold hard currency, meaning dollars, were crushed all by design. There will be a federal centralized top-down controlled digital dollar coming. It's already being used on certain government contracts. There is simply too much invested for this new credit system to not be completed and fully implemented. The aforementioned statement is not a typo. This new digital system will not be a currency as it is now. This digital blockchain dollar will be a credit system, not a currency. And a credit system can be manipulated as the creditor sees fit. A currency is based on a set of mutual understandings and market forces such as an agreed wage for labor or a price for goods and services. A credit can be removed as it is a credit, something given by a creditor to a borrower. Do you see the difference? <laughs> Insidious and darkly genius at the same time. Oh yes, in crypto, meaning Bitcoin, Ethereum, etc., are not going anywhere. 
buy some if you can. There is something very satisfying about a currency not controlled by anyone, especially central bankers and hedge fund tech billionaires. Crypto is a blockchain currency, not a digital credit, credit system. Invest in land, metals, if you invest in metals, just bury them deep enough in, your, in the ground so no one will find them. Invest in, me, in land, metals, especially copper and silver <coughs> right now, real estate and tangibles. A man could be made rich if he owned a producing lumber mill right now. Yes, I, the price of a, uh, an 8-foot 2x2 two two board at Lowe's today is $5.77 for an 8-foot 2x2. Two two. Okay, number three on his list, the rest of the shit show coming our way. There are those in the parasite class, globally and domestically, that are trying to foment a great war between the U.S. and China slash Russia. I don't think it will escalate into a full-blown world war. However, the proxy wars and the sanctions will escalate. The global south will suffer more and exacerbate an already untenable mass migration crisis for the first world nations in the West specifically. This is all by design. Yep, this is all by design. Global instability is the goal here. Chaos and all that entails is their utopia. The issues with, with Erdogan and Turkey are being carried out by paid instigators and covert actors to destabilize Turkey. They want Turkey controlled as it is a strategic key point of influence and geographically significant to control of the region, meaning access to Iran, resupply points in the proximity, and a choke point to the west. The Israeli question is simple. They want to permanently remove the Palestinians from the region. They need the land and the resources, plain and simple. Africa will continue to be exploited even more by the global corporate state, but more so by the rising Chinese interests in the region. Africa will be a critical pivot point for the global powers going forward. It's the resources, lithium, coltan, copper, etc., like always. The skyrocketing crime waves in the U.S. will continue. This also is a planned operation. The goal, again, is to debase and create a form of self-fulfilling chaos as the norm. Upwards of 20 to 40 percent of police officers in the U.S. are either resigning or retiring early, and I don't blame them one bit. This opens the door for a form of government corporate control of the security of our nation. There will be no more municipalities. There will only be a centralized, top-down, non-local controlled security enforcement and surveillance apparatus. The panopticon is here. Again, I don't know what the panopticon is. I'm embarrassed to admit. Again, they are way too invested to stop now. The corona non-event 
the corona non-event served its purpose. There will be more planned events and actions coming in the future. Artificially created power outages lasting longer than the recent grid down events. Cyber attacks, some carried out by hackers of course, but all major hacks are an intelligence operation. War by other means. Again, the goal is to destabilize and debase a nation, namely us. The poverty and homeless crisis will only get worse. This issue is allowed to grow and become more severe as it serves multiple agendas. Saul Ainsky, I have no idea who Saul Ainsky, Saul Alinsky would be proud indeed. The weekly shootings will continue. Again, these will be cultivated to feed the chaos doctrine. The 650 or so wealthiest people in the world made over $1.8 trillion last year. That fact alone should answer all questions. They are taking it all. What we are seeing is the Cloward Piven model. Never heard the term Cloward Piven. If you want to Google that, Cloward is spelled C-L-O-W-A-R-D hyphen Piven, P-I-V-E-N model. People should pay very close attention to their pension funds, mutual funds, etc. within the next 12 to 16 months or so. Shenanigans a la 1929 and 1933 are afoot. The major players have no concern of the consequences because to them and their institutions, there are none. The rule book is out and old news. There is a reason it is called Wall Street. I will stop now. I assume I have made your evening. This is just a snippet of my yearly threat assessment. Your advice is very prescient these days. People really should get out there and enjoy nature and life while they still can. It's like the renegade Voltaire said of his enemies, quote, the best revenge is to live well. I was just saying to my buddy Rob out in the garden a couple of weeks ago when we were planting our organic garden that this is the most subversive act you can commit. It, nothing enrages uh, these bugs in a jar shakers more than people out there planting their own organic food. Yes, you say it, you said it, Voltaire, the best revenge is to live well. I contend all free-minded people will be renegades soon, and that suits me just fine. <laughs> Amen, uh, Brother Stephen Davidson. As I say, I'm not sure uh, what some of that meant, but the parts that I do understand, uh, well, there's a little bit of a debate about food prices and stuff, but I, I have to admit I don't really pay that much attention uh, when I'm in there buying my uh, factory farmed chicken, which is going for 99 cents a pound like it was 10 years ago. But uh, it is now five minutes to midnight on June 1st, 2021. Uh, I have, I'm gonna give the universe five more minutes. And then it will be June 2nd. 2021.
get out there and enjoy it while you still can. Bye guys. Yes, little dog, I know it. Doing rants at midnight. I had to fill up the last 30 minutes of this day. We went to give the universe, I said, the, uh, the offer from the universe stands until 11.59.59 p.m. and it is 11.58 p.m. The universe shuts down in two minutes. Prepare. Bye guys.